Hey, what's up? It's Newton. I'm back in the shop, and uh, today we're going to do something that's uh, pretty simple, and uh, it's reshafting a putter. So I've got my old Odyssey Pro Type number seven, which uh, for me is one of those great putters that I'll just probably never get rid of. Uh, I've had it forever, and uh, you know it always makes its way into the rotation at some point during the year. Uh, but today I'm just going to reshaft the putter or reshaft it. There's no really, really no need. It's not broken. It's not bent. I haven't been throwing it around the course or anything like that. But I simply just have a black putter shaft. So want to just cosmetically upgrade it and uh, need a new grip anyway. This old Iomic is uh, pretty uh, pretty worn. So I've got a new uh, Lampkin deep etch uh, cord. And uh, so yeah, for this, uh, all you're really going to need is a vise, a uh, rubber uh, cl uh, clamp, and then uh, some heat. So you could either use a blowtorch or a heat gun. Either way, this doesn't take a lot of heat or a lot of time to break the uh, epoxy. And then uh, either a small drill bit or a hosel cleaning brush to just clean out the hosel when you're done. So uh, that's all you're going to need to, uh, oh, and some eye protection because, you know, let's be safe here. So that's pretty much all you're going to need to pull the head. So let's do that real quick, and then we'll get into gluing it up, measuring, putting the grip on. We'll finish that up, but let's uh, get the head pulled first. All right, so what you want to do here is just apply a little bit of heat. It doesn't have to be a lot. You just want enough to break the uh, the epoxy down. Um, just a few seconds on each side uh, here, the hosel will pretty much do the trick. Um, you know, maybe 10 seconds, something like that. Like I said, just enough to heat this thing up. It doesn't have to be red hot or glowing or anything like that. Um, and since it's a steel shaft, uh, you could actually use the, a torch and not worry about damaging any part of the, uh, uh, of the shaft. So... Uh, if it's a graphite shaft, you would if you want to use a heat gun and a shaft puller, and then just give it a twist, and it'll break the epoxy and pop right off. So, so the next thing you want to do is clean out this hosel. It's got a little bit of epoxy still left in it. Uh, I've got like a, a, a hosel cleaning brush here that you can kind of put in and, and kind of just clean out any of that excess epoxy. If you don't have a brush, uh, you can also use like a small drill bit and just uh, run it inside there just to get some of that out. Um, but whatever you have, uh, just you want to clean that out. Like I said, the brush is the best, though, uh, just to clean all that, uh, that old epoxy out and get that uh, hosel clean and ready for uh, the new shaft. All right, so after you get the hosel cleared out, cleaned out, what you want to do is measure the, the depth of, uh, of the hosel on the shaft. So you basically just want to kind of take your putter, put it over, and then mark where, how far, you know, how far down, down that shaft's going to go into the hosel. Uh, I like to mark mine with a little bit of tape before prepping it, especially with a black shaft where you're going to have, you know, it's all cosmetic. Uh, so I like to put a little piece of tape there uh, just to kind of let me know. And then I've got a little belt sander on my cutoff wheel here that I'm going to use to kind of prep the, sh the tip of the shaft, kind of rough it up and give some of that epoxy something to really latch onto. So it doesn't have to be a ton, just something just, you know, get that, that black uh, mark off and also rough it up just a touch. All right, that should be about done. And again, with putters, you have a little bit of little bit more uh, forgiveness. Uh, these don't take a beating like a real iron shaft does or anything like that. So uh, you know your tip prep doesn't have to be exactly perfect uh, for it to hold up. But you definitely still want to tip the, the prep of the prep the tip of the shaft uh, before you epoxy it in. All right, so now we're just going to mix epoxy, and with epoxy. Uh, if you want to know everything there is to know, definitely check out Ryan Barath's video on GolfWRX.com about epoxy. He nails all the details, uh, the way you really should do things. Uh, but since it's a putter, I'm a little less concerned with uh, it being the exact strongest uh, bond it can be. So I'm just going to eyeball it and do equal parts A and B of the epoxy, uh, you know, just by eye. Again, you probably should measure it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of glass shafting beads in as well. When I test fit the shaft into the putter head, uh, there was a little bit of play, not much, just a touch, and this, the glass shafting beads will kind of help center that shaft uh, inside the hosel. So you want to go sh go ahead and make sure you really uh, stir that up well, mix it together, uh, let that epoxy start to really uh, congeal and gel. Uh, and then once you mix it uh, mix it up there, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit on uh, inside the hosel and then uh, on the shaft as well. But uh, make sure you do really do mix it up well. Uh, you know, if you just kind of, you know, do a little bit of mixing it's not really gonna hold as well but uh, yeah take a little bit uh, put it into the hosel there 
Uh, I use like an old pencil actually, uh, it just works really well, but a thin layer inside the hosel, uh, coating all the walls, and then a little bit uh, on the, the prep part of the shaft as well. So just uh, doesn't have to be a ton, it doesn't have to be a big thick layer, uh, just uh, a thin coating that covers uh, that prepped area and uh, you know wipe off any excess as well. Because uh, like I said, it doesn't need to be you know globbed on or anything like that. And then uh, when you go to put it in the hosel, uh, just go ahead and kind of give it a little bit of a spin, uh, just so that way it kind of coats everything evenly. Uh, and then take a little piece of paper towel and uh, wipe off the excess. So once you wipe off the excess, you should be good to go. All right, so once that's glued up, uh, I just set it aside over here uh, to dry. The epoxy I have is, uh, is tour set, which is about an hour to hour and a half uh, where it's going to gel and, and be you know workable. So I've got an hour and a half to kill, so I'll probably just jump on Golf WRX, check out the forums and see what's going on, and then uh, we'll measure and cut down and grip the shaft in just a minute. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half, maybe a little more. I might have went and got a sandwich instead. But uh, our epoxy's dry, so our putter's ready to go. Uh, check the epoxy on my little uh, piece of paper. It was firm, and uh, took a look at the putter. We look good to go. So now uh, we just have to cut this down. Now, cutting it down for some people like myself who have multiple putters, it's not that hard to do. I can take one of my old putters, set it next to it, mark off you know 33 inches, which is what I play most of my putters. I'm not a tall guy. Um, but some people don't have multiple putters or they don't have a benchtop ruler where they can measure off a putter and, and mark it. Uh, so the easy way to do it is to actually take a tape measure and run it basically down the angle of the shaft up and mark off at 33, 34, you know, whatever length you want. So uh, let's take a look and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so you just take your putter here and you take a just standard tape measure that you would have laying around the house, set your putter down on a flat surface, and then run the the tape measure pretty much right down the same angle as the shaft, uh, trying to keep them just about the same, and then go through and just uh, mark off at about uh, whatever length you want, 33, 34, whatever that length is. So everybody measures a little different way, but uh, that'll get you pretty close to uh, to your number. All right, so now we're going to cut off, uh, cut down the shaft. Uh, I've got a little cutoff wheel on my uh, my you know belt sander and cutoff wheel. You can use a uh, pipe cutter as well that you actually screw and clamp on and rotate around. Works just as easily. Uh, I mean, you could use a metal hacksaw. The only thing with that is that you got to make sure the line is perfectly straight, and sometimes that's not easy to do. But I've got a cutoff wheel here, so I'm going to use that. And if you're using one, definitely use some eye protection because sparks are going to fly. Then when you're done, make sure to give it a little sand to take off any sharp edges that might be on the edge of that uh, edge of the shaft. Perfect. Now we just gotta grip it. All right, now we just gotta grip this putter. So what you'll need for this is a again a rubber clamp for uh, for the shaft, uh, a vise. And uh, just put the, the club in the, rubber, in the rubber clamp, put it in your vise, tighten it down. Don't go crazy. You don't want to bend a shaft. Uh, steel's a little stronger. I have cracked a graphite shaft before, so that's not fun. Uh, but you put it in, and you want to make sure the, the face of the putter is straight up and down. You want it to be pure vertical, uh, you know, as straight as you can possibly get it. So when you get that grip on, it's going to be pretty close to, to square. Uh, and then you'll just have to do maybe a minor tweak. Um, I use kind of thicker two-sided tape. Uh, this is like the two inch, I think it's just a hair under, uh, but it's just two-sided tape. And basically you just kind of put your grip on here, have an idea of where it goes. Uh, keep it a little bit under the length of the grip, because you don't want any tape showing. Uh, so you just kind of mark off there, and depending on how many strips of tape, or if you want to build any tape up, uh, you can do that here. I, uh, for putters, I just go one wrap, one wrap of double-sided tape. So uh, you put that on, kind of force it down and then peel off the uh, the backing on the tape, which uh, can sometimes be easier or not depending on your nails. Uh, and then just wrap it around the shaft. Try to keep any uh, wrinkles or anything like that. Try to minimize those. So just wrap it around the shaft there. 
And then at the end, you also want to give it about a half inch or so, and you just kind of want to fold that under, making sure it covers the ends of the shaft so it's easier for the grip to come on. So uh, then you take your grip and kind of plug the bottom little hole, pour a little solvent down in there, not a ton, just a little bit, and then the rest, you know, and then let that sit, and then take your solvent, kind of pour it all over the, the two-sided tape here, and when you're first starting out gripping, you definitely can be very liberal with your uh, application of solvent. Then give your solvent a little shake inside the grip to coat it, and then pour the rest of your solvent right on the tape, and in one big motion, on you go. So that is going to squirt out on you, so don't wear any nice clothes when you do grips. And then uh, take your little towel or paper towel, whatever you got. I use old golf towels. Wipe off any excess uh, solvent. And then take your putter, set it down, and just make sure your grip is straight. So it'll stay pretty, uh, pretty movable for about, for a few minutes. And then it'll slowly uh, harden, but Make sure you're dead straight there, and once you're straight, then you're good to go. Just set it aside, and uh, you know, solvent will dry in probably 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, you know, maybe a little longer depending on how much uh, solvent you used. So there you go. You have your uh, putter about 20 minutes. You're ready to take her out to the green, sink some putts. So, anyways, this is Newton Golf WRX. Another episode of the shop, and. Uh, We'll see you next time.